RAD1, released in the past year, introduces support for secure connectivity for encrypted traffic utilizing the latest standards including TLS 1.3 and HTTP 2. The TLS decryption exceptions are managed from the HTTPS inspection policy. In this policy, we can see here three exception rules. The first rule is to create an exception for update services such as Windows Update using dynamic destination object called HTTPS Service Recommended Bypass. That is automatically updated to include all of the services requiring bypass. The second rule is to create exceptions for applications using certificate pinning that cannot be inspected. Using the HTTPS Service Optional Bypass Dynamic Object, Customers do not need to manually manage exceptions per application. Here as well, the list of applications included in this dynamic object is continuously updated. Customers can also choose to create exceptions for custom applications or specific categories. In this case, for healthcare and financial services. The last rule will apply TLS decryption for any application or service not matched by the exceptions above. To summarize, the dynamic objects are updated in runtime without the need to apply policy changes to the firewall. This unique capability reduces the overhead in managing TLS exceptions, avoiding the need to frequently add TLS decryption exceptions on a pair application basis. Another unique capability of Checkpoint TLS decryption is the ability to detect and prevent SNI bypass. In this demo, our corporate policy blocks access to adult sites, so when a user tries to access a porn site, URL filtering will block this attempt. Now, let's see what happens when a user is using a SNI spoofing browser add-on. This add-on overrides the SNI header with a false value to try and trick the alert categorization. Now, let's try and replace Bank of America for the porn site. As you can see, the SNI spoofing fails and the page is still blocked. This happens due to the patent pending SNI verification capability that makes sure that the site categorization is done according to the real destination host. The host responding to the TLS handshake and not to the requested host, which is the seven name indicator in the snow fields. Now let's see how SNI spoofing attempt is being blocked by URL filtering. By reviewing the log, we'll learn that the attacker was trying to modify the host name for the server name indication so the user will reach a malicious site instead of Bank of America. The attack was identified and prevented, keeping the end user safe.